the biggest buyer of stocks is selling. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And after weeks of talking about how the machines are selling, Goldman is now saying it's not the machines you should be worried about. It's because the biggest buyer of stocks is turned into sellers. Let's over the Goldman Tactical Flow of Funds report to come out this weekend to see what's going on, what they're worried about. And they know after opening up their third quarter statements over the weekend, and many of those that are in the mail won't be open for a couple weeks, Retail has finally blinked. Capitulation is near. This is the last standing asset owner who's not sold is moving money right now. They note that retail added 89 billion where the money market flows in this week, selling their stocks and bonds. This is a massive move. Do not underestimate the significance of this new movement in cash. And this is just the first phase. Again, this is the early part. We'll look at some charts here in a minute. We'll look at the machine positionings, but the biggest now headwind is not just the fact that retail will start selling. It's the fact that in next week, guess what we have? Another round of quantitative heat easing that hits the market. It's now every two weeks we get these big drops. And I meant quantitative tightening. I know some of you caught that, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna put further downward pressure on stocks and cause retail to to flee. Let's take a look at how the machines are positioned. Let's start out with Nomira. And no real change over last week. They're still heavily short. And for those who are new to the show, wondering now why these charts are blurred is simple. This is proprietary data put out by the investment banks. It puts a specific signaling to where their clients are positioned. It is not actually allowed to for public comment. We can talk about it, but we can't show the data. How about for Goldman? Well, they don't have that same issue. They note in their global CTA update, their models are 76 billion short global equities, short 21 billion of the S&P. And get this, sellers in all scenarios over next week, the tail risk sits to the upside they notice over the next month. So here we see in a flat tape this week, they sell 28 billion up tape, sell 10 billion down tape, sell 36 billion over over the next month, what do we see? Flat tape down their sell 31 billion over the month. But if the market should go up, they're big buyers at 134 billion. If the market goes down further, still net sellers at 31 billion. How about TD Securities? Not to be confused with TD Ameritrade, completely separate companies. Their machines still short on the equity side, but no sign of movement. So what we're seeing is we kind of look at the machines. They're really not looking to make big moves here uh, to the upside unless something shifts. We're still seeing some selling, not from an Amira, not from TD Securities, but still out of Goldman. Now let's take a look at the momentum of the market here because it's remarkably negative. We'll start out with the S&P 500. We know momentum negative. The RSI trying to come back into positive territory, at which would be a cross of 40. The MACD has turned higher, uh, but we know the momentum timer pro now after two consecutive daily buy signals is a daily sell signal and a string of very long signals that are saying, hey, don't buy into this thing. And that report is saying, don't take a position right now. We know Friday's closed down to 362, just a bit above the recent June lows. And uh, what is the downside target? Well, the downside target is, well, pretty far below. We'll look here in a bit. Break that 357 level on SPY and bad things are going to happen. There'll be a much larger amount of selling. Upside target 370 to 371. Now, if you're wondering, what is this Momentum Timer Pro? It's part of the Markets Insider Pro package. It's designed to screen a wide variety of ETFs, provide signals to help you become a better trader. Our list, our subscribers already got a hot tip out the gate. We got a second tip. And now over the weekend, we got our third trade set up. If you want to sign up, there's a 50% off coupon and then a 50% off all renewals. I'll put a link up here in the corner and the description below. Markets Insider Pro. Let's take a look at the charts of SPY and see what's going on. Why does Goldman think that retail is going to sell here? Well, it's simple. Let's go back to the pandemic. The market was rising. What happens? The pandemic hits and all of a sudden you see the markets tank. Now, the view here, the popular view is that there was a lot of people selling. That actually didn't happen. They got caught. Money managers didn't have time to sell. They went down with the market and then the market started coming back. And what happened is you saw money managers start to reposition as interest rates went up. They sold off bonds and they bought stocks. And where did they do most of that buying? Well, they did that up here. So what happened is, again, you see investors, a lot of retail investors, money managers went down with the market. The market rallied back as interest rates went up. They started selling off those bonds and buying 
and overweighting in equities. And now what you see is the market is on the edge of this huge cliff. And I want you to see we've got the volume profile turned on. And note, there isn't a lot of volume here compared to, say, well down here where you see this red bar, which is the largest chunk of volume traded in the last five years. Notably, you see this is where people were selling. Those that did sell, they sold down here. So what do you see? There's a lot of people who are now retired looking at their statements saying, hey, if this thing keeps going down, I got to go back to work that will turn into sellers. And if we continue to see any selling pressure, whether it's from Goldman's, Goldman's machines or quantitative tightening that comes out at the end of the week, hitting the following week, you see this tape come down. And what you'll see is a flood of selling. The downside risk here is 322 on the SPY. Let's take a look at the Qs here. So we've now got the Invesco QQQ Trust tech stocks. What we know is momentum is negative. RSI still, you know, headed, starting to head higher. D's across that critical 40 level. MACD has a positive cross. Momentum time pro after a large string of sell signals popped a couple buy signals. Now back to selling signals. Again, you gotta sign up to get the report, get the trade tips. No position as of right now. There's no reason you would take a position if you're looking to do this. Maybe to the short side. How about the downside target is a big drop through 260 to 261. We note that the S&P and the NASDAQ broke our upside targets and then got a hard reversal. Upside targets unchanged over last week. And here's the chart for QQQ. What do we know? The same issue, except there's even less volume traded here. One thing that's gonna come up is for uh, third quarter earnings. One thing I'm listening for is our companies going to cancel their share buyback programs or cut them back. If they do, takes another big buyer out of the market. You look for a move down here to, uh, I think I said 322, it should be 222. Uh, all down here is a potential bigger risk. Do I see that happening in a week? No, but I see this is a bigger move down upside move into there so yes we got that a little wrong it's uh that downside target oh 260 is what i said let's go back and see uh where's 260 oh down right into this little uh, spot here and from there all the way down again you get below these pandemic pre-pandemic highs and people are going to cut and run on this market all right, now let's shift over, talk about the bond market. This is entirely reacting to the Fed. I mean, this is, we're seeing for the first time in ages that the bond market does not respond to economic fundamentals. Now, this is a big problem because if interest rates remain too high as the economy slows, it means the downturn in stocks, it means the downturn in the economy is only going to be even worse. So let's take a look at how the machines are positioned here, and then we'll look at perhaps some charts. And what do we know? that of course Nomura we see they're nearly max short across the board and that's actually means there's a potential for a flip here as Goldman notes with their Goldman box bond funds over the next week in a flat tape they buy in an up big tape they buy in a down big tape and remember Goldman mentioned this you know we go back what did Goldman say a couple of weeks ago that said, hey, there is a point after the around this Fed you know, meeting that the selling of bonds stops. It, we run out. Well, now you're starting to see it's running out. Check this out. Notably, over the next month, in a flat tape, buying $49 billion, up big tape, buying $136 billion, down big tape? Oh, they're buying 16 billion, so markets go down, they become buyers of bonds. How about that? That would be a big change. And what do we know from TD Securities? Similar story here, they're pretty well short and looking perhaps sooner to buy than to go even shorter. I see no signs that they're going to be selling anymore anytime soon. Now, how about looking at the big picture? We've seen this massive run up of bonds, again, due to rapid central bank tightening. We've noted in the past, you get to these levels and you see interest rates crash down pretty hard. Sometimes they rally back, but you note the downside risk here is not in price of bonds, but to all those people who are short bonds. Let's take a look at momentum screen. We're not even gonna bother with a chart on this because there's really no point. We know it's down, we know it's down a lot and there's really no signs that there we should be taking a position if you're trading this. How about momentum being negative? RSI sitting at 35, nothing to see here. Still not over 40. MACD's got a negative cross. Momentum Time Pro picked up a buy signal just briefly 13 days ago and is now back to 12 consecutive sell signals. 
downside we could see uh, down to 98.60 upside target just slightly above it all will matter if we see those machines start to buy that could change this picture pretty quick now let's take a look at commodities goldman notes that over the next week and i know many of you you know are looking at the physical metal markets you gold silver uh crude oil and you're saying man these things have got to turn around well goldman says you might be right that could happen look at this over the next week 20 nearly 24 billion a buy up a big tape 40 billion to buy down big tape 10 billion to sell over the next month 42 billion in buying in a flat tape alone that's big up big tape you see 158 billion to buy down big tape 42 billion to sell so if you're chasing the commodity market you've got to like the fact that there's some potential coming here how about for td securities well there is some moves potential here if we start to see some of these metals firm up in price you can see these models flip from short up and start covering their shorts that would be big let's take a look at our screens what do we note momentum is positive on gld rsi over 40 macd's got the positive cross momentum time pro is picking up six consecutive daily buy signals for the not up mild upside target at 161 162 downside target just below here and kind of what i want to note on the uh, metals here and uh, particularly gold is i still think the bigger picture is it goes lower uh, i will show you the bull case i think the bull case may be kind of short-lived here but let's take a look at the charts and i think you'll see kind of makes sense that even if we see commodities buying we don't know how much of that is gold so let's take a look at gld here first and what do we know that this beautifully large topping pattern we saw price come down it bounced up it broke down and it's now reconfirming the bottom of this big beautiful topping pattern now how do we know this happened well we see the same thing as silver we saw this topping pattern silver it broke down came up here flirted around with this zone and then came plunging down let's look at gold futures what do we see came down to that critical line of support bounced up came back down broke down is now back into the zone where there were previous buyers that are now sellers you break through that again come back down to 1687 and again your next case is 1500 there's your bear case for gold your bull case is you come down to 1687 and bounce if you're trading gold here you should wait this one out and not try to pick up pennies in front of a steamroller we'd wait till momentum time pro gave us a much stronger signal perhaps on his monthly that would be to me far more interesting now let's continue on with our trade of the week we've been talking about the dollar this big wrecking ball notably that wasn't the trade the subscribers got we'll leave that one to them but let's go on to what we see in currency markets everybody is short anything that isn't the dollar they're long the dollar makes perfect sense we see that here from td securities how about the us dollar bullish etf uup we've had a long buy signal on this for a while uh, we'll note momentum time pro did pick up a oh, this should be three consecutive daily buy signals it did pick up a sell signal here briefly we are still think this is going higher rsi is at 62 macd picked up a negative cross upside target means 116 on dxy that means financial crisis looms downside target got moved up slightly to 29.62 so again if you're trading this you you want to bump your stops up a little bit let's take a look at uup and what do we see pull down to the 21 day moving average and bounce stuff up that and let's zoom in a little bit here we can see that it's following its 21 day nicely some points likely to come down and hit its 50 day moving average here in green but right now due to the global dollar shortage this trade is only going higher but remember when you go vertical like this you know if you're just getting into this now i would say don't bother if you're in this just tighten up your stops because you we get up here to 116 next move now you're looking at maybe then 120 if it breaks 120 sky is the limit for where the dollar goes and for the market that is not the picture it wants right now that means equities come crashing down the global economy comes crashing down and the fed cuts rates and with that i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now